What's up everybody? So today we got the Explorer back in the garage. It's got a slight issue that we need to go ahead and fix because uh, Iowa weather is a little bit weird. One day it's like 80 degrees, the next day it's like 30 degrees. So uh, our little issue is the heat in this Explorer. The heat currently does not work and I'll show you guys exactly what it does. But uh, when you go to turn it on, it just starts clicking. And from what I've read online, it seems like it's the blend door actuator. So I'll go ahead and show you guys what the car is doing and we're gonna go ahead and try to fix it. Now that we're in the Explorer, I can go and show you guys what it's doing. So we'll go and turn this on. I'm not gonna turn it on all the way. We're just gonna turn it to accessory. And uh, as you can currently see, it's set to cool or cold side. So if we move it to the hot side, you guys can hear that clicking. That clicking sounds like it's a blend door actuator from what I've read online, and uh, that seems to be our issue. So if you try to move it back, sometimes it stops or it'll like actually work a little bit, but this thing's been broken for a little while now. And you can see it's not going away until you move it all the way to cold. So hot, it clicks, cold, it stops. And like I said, with the temperature here in Iowa fluctuating so much, it goes back and forth. And uh, like I said, one day it's 30 degrees, next day it's 80 degrees. So we definitely need our heat and it needs to be fixed anyway. So let's go ahead, tear this apart and uh, see if we can get back there to access the blend door actuator and replace it. So first thing we need to do, pull out this rubber piece here. Now give us access to that little screw right there. Once that's off, we can go ahead and pop off these plastic clips back here. There's one here and one on the other side and then we'll move on to the back. And that was a seven millimeter. Next, we'll go in here, open this up, take a little pry tool or a screwdriver, let's wedge it, pops up. And now this can be lifted up. Once we get this up, you guys can see there's a couple wires underneath there, so we'll need to disconnect those and then we can pull this out of the way. Now that we got that top section out of the way, we can go and take out these two bolts here. Looks like there's a couple 10 millimeters. And then once those are out, we can move on to the back section of this inner console. Now for the back half, we're gonna need to move the chair forward. And as you can see, it'll be that bolt there. Looks like it's another 10 millimeter and there's one on the other side as well. So it actually looks like there's a few more hidden bolts before this will come out inside the center console here. There's four bolts down there. And then we're also gonna need to take out those four there. And they all look like they are seven millimeters. So we'll get those out and uh, see if this thing comes out the rest of the way. Now then, the whole thing should be loose. You can kind of see there where the little clips are inside there. So we should just lift up and then there's two little tabs here. You can see that's out of the way. That's out of the way as well. We should be able to lift up maybe from the back. There we go. Now then that should be slid out enough. You guys can see there it all let go. And we'll go ahead, pop up that wiring there and then work our way in that section over there. I think that should be enough room. So now we can see down here, you gotta get this brace out of the way. So we gotta get those two 10 mils out. And I believe there's two more up there. And then once that's out, we can get this air duct out of the way. So there'll be a seven here. I think there's another seven up there. So we'll slide that out of the way. Then we should be able to access the actuator. Okay, so we got that out. The wiring harness here has a little tree clip on the back side of it. Those two screws ended up being eight millimeter. And now our actuator, we should be able to access up here. So I'll try to get underneath there and show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so we'll try to get you guys underneath here to see what's going on. But this yellow colored thing here, 
is the uh, actuary we're trying to access to. You guys can kind of see that there's one screw there, there's a plug. I think there's a screw up above that as well. And then I believe, I don't know how well you guys can see this because I can barely see it. I believe there's like two more screws on this side and they're all, should be eight millimeters. So we'll try to pull that out. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use this here. This is one of those ratcheting wrenches and uh, try to get it out. I'm probably not gonna be able to show you guys just because of how tight a space it is. But uh, once I get it out, I'll show you guys what it looks like. So here it is. This is the little actuator thing. This thing is an absolute pain in the butt to get out. But we managed to get it out. You can see the plug was on this side. So it was up in there like so. Pop the plug out, the clip is on the back side. So you have to kind of reach around, pull it out. And then there is three screws holding this in. So there's one here, one here, and then one here. And it's up there, just like so. And then you gotta try to pry this out where this long rod goes through and this is what changes the blend door. Um, yeah, this thing sucked. It was not easy to get out. You definitely have to kind of maneuver in a weird position and get inside there. Um, I ended up popping out this bezel trim here around the radio. It's just a couple of tabs here. Just take a plastic pry bar, pry tool and just kind of get behind it. Pops right out, pretty easy to get out. And then I just undid these two clips here to get access inside here because down here on the bottom left side, had a little bit easier access with the eight millimeter uh, ratcheting wrench to get to it. So we'll go ahead compare this to the new one, maybe open that thing up, see what it looks like, make sure that is what the problem was before we reassemble all this and uh, go from there. So take you guys over to the bench now and let's have a look. So here's the old one. This is the one we just pulled out, you can see here. And then here is the new one still in bag. This is actually a Ford Motorcraft part. There's the part number for you guys. I'll have this link down in the description as well. I ended up picking this up off of Amazon. It came pretty quick, like two days. So here it is. Looks to be about the same, same tabs and everything. Same style of plug there as well as here. Um, but yeah, what I wanna do is kinda open this thing up and see because from what I've read is there's like little gears inside there. They're like plastic and they break and that's the reason why it doesn't work. So I just wanna confirm that. So let's go ahead and pop this thing open and uh, take a look. So here it is all separated. This is a little motor that controls the wheels and causes the blend door to open. And I believe it's this little one. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but it looks like it is. Oh, well, that just came off with that. So this thing's definitely junk, but we're gonna pull all these off and have a look on here. All these gears look to be pretty decent. But then if we look at this little guy. Oh yeah, that whole right side I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but all those teeth are missing. So this is definitely the problem. It's kind of cool to see what this thing looks like all disassembled. So like I said, this is a new part. We'll go ahead and install this one now. I probably won't be able to show you guys the install just because of how tight a space it was. I couldn't show you how to remove this one other than telling you that the three uh, eight, millimeter screw, eight millimeter screws were holding it down. This is gonna be a little bit of a challenge to get back in place. We'll go and take our little uh, foam boot here slide it back over top of the new one and then reinstall this and we'll verify and check to make sure that the uh, actuator is now working okay so i went ahead got the actuator back in got the brace on got the vent on put the wiring all back together so that should all be good now i probably jumped the gun on putting that back together because i haven't tested it yet so let's figure out if i need to take this apart again um yeah that kind of sucks it takes a lot longer than you think and like i said there's not a whole lot of room between here and here. I don't know, like I said, how well you guys can see it. You pretty much just gotta like pry on the dash um, and just getting it out. And then I went ahead and I put this centerpiece here back on the bezel, the radio bezel. Um, like I said, pretty easy to remove. Just take a plastic trim tool, pop it off. You can get access and see a little bit better back behind there. It still is really, really snug to do anything, but uh, let's go ahead, test this thing out and see if the actuator fixed our problem. All right, so we'll go ahead and start it up this time, see if it actually works and the heat and everything kicks on. Okay, we've started. Let's see if, let's put it to cold first, make sure. Okay, you guys can hear it blowing out, I think. Switch it over to heat. It's 
not clicking anymore. There it goes. I just heard it switch over. I don't know how if you guys can hear it at all, but I can hear it like the uh, sound of the air coming through the vents changed a little bit. So we should have heat now. We won't know until, until I actually take this thing out for a drive and get it up to temperature. But uh, let's go ahead and put everything back together and see how it all works. And just like that, the Explorer is all back together and good to go. I went ahead, I let it run for a little while, got up to temperature, played around here with the blend door, make sure the actuator worked properly, and it does. It got out, pumped out some hot air, switched over to the cold side, it got cold, so we're all good there. No more clicking noise, because that was like the most annoying part of it when you get in here and you want heat and you switch it over and you just hear that click, 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 click noise. So yeah, it's all good to go now. So by the time we go, go out in the morning, and uh, it's like 30 degrees outside, we'll be able to run heat. And by the afternoon when it's 80 degrees, we'll be able to run AC. So glad that's all fixed. Pretty easy job, took a little bit of time, but the main struggle was just accessing those three little screws that were attached to the actuator. Um, definitely pick yourself up a set of these, the ratcheting wrenches. I'll try to link some of these down in the description below for you guys, as well as the part here, the actuator itself, the Ford Motorcraft, YH1744. I'll have that down there so you guys can get that if you guys have the same issue that I was having. And uh, I just think it's crazy. Turn that apart, get in, check that out, and see that's where it breaks. Just sets there and clicks against the other gears. So now it's all fixed. We're all good to go. Hope you guys liked this video. If you guys did, make sure to give a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. We got plenty more stuff coming. We'll be doing some more stuff to explore here sometime soon. Not sure when, but we'll be back on the Civic, do some more stuff on the Subaru. So stay tuned for that, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.